Hey everybody, this is Damon at Greenhorn Gardening, and I just want to let you know that the USDA has some new plant uh, hardiness zone maps. And first of all, why do you want to use the uh, plant hardiness zone map maps? Is it it is gonna is really good for figuring out what's gonna grow best in your area? You know, what kind of climate are you living in? What's the what's the absolute coldest that it's gonna get, and what plants can survive, and what kinds of things are you going to be able to grow during the summers and it's a great little uh, tool to have it's, it's one of those things that you once you figure out what your zone is it's just something you'll just work with um, it's something you really just kind of need to know of uh, one time and so let's just go on over to the USDA's website if you just google USDA plant hardiness zone map it should spit you out here if you click there uh, this is for the United States, and you know this is the new map. So they've been, I guess they're always just collecting data as to the temperatures and, the, and those kinds of things. And these maps run up through, I believe, uh, up through 2005. I know this is the 2012 map, but the data collected is up through from I think 1976 to 2005. The great thing about this is that. Uh, I don't know if you, some of you guys know the old maps, but some of the old maps, I guess they, it's a lot of them look black and white and they had all these weird pencil marks and scratches and, you know, and the, the key system was seem just seemed a lot harder to, to use. It was good information, but with now, with all the digital technologies that we have, there's a lot more things you can do. So the way you use this thing is if you, let's say you lived in Iowa here. You can just click on your state, and bam, there you go. Here are all the counties. Here are all the you see all the rivers, and let's say you're living here, I guess, in Mitchell County, and you're right here on this border. It's good to know that you're kind of right there, kind of in this transition point, you know. And there may be some sort of land mass or something that is causing that, you know. Let's go to um, say New York State see notice here closer to the lake uh, you are in a much higher zone than those who are further south and isn't that amazing see which we call microclimates yeah, those of you are here you know, see close see close you are to the water you know big bodies of water tend to bring in a lot of moisture temperatures tend to warm up somewhat well, guess what? If you, the further inland you get, and eh, guess what? Colder and colder it gets. And so uh, it's good to know these kinds of things. And so another way you can use this is by zip code. Let's see, just for instance. And they want you to put in this, the capture. These captures are surprisingly easy to read you know a lot of captures are very difficult to read you know they want it they're trying to prevent robots and I guess spammers or I don't know whatever it is but but then they make it so difficult to read you can't read it and so uh, consequently if you are you know you can't see so well you can also there's an audio option here that will just read it out for you so validate and it works uh, and there it get right there. It tells you zones 8A, and it's just you know, what this gives you is the average. Uh, actually, no, this is the extreme minimum temperature. This is the lowest temperature that you're gonna experience, and that's about right. I mean, the lowest temperature I've experienced in in my area has been about 10 to 15 degrees. That's the extreme lower end. Uh, in recent years, the, the the lowest I think it's been is about 17, so it hasn't even ex reached the extreme lower end, but uh, and that's it. And I know if those of you up way up north are kind of laughing at that. That's so so warm, but um, but anyway, that's it. You can type in something else, say uh, like 90210. It tells you zone 10B. See, it's already interactive. Now these maps here are much more color they're color coded and that's great but if you are have sight problems you know with uh, color blindness you still have the good old number system the good old you know alphanumeric system zone 10b 8a 3a whatever and just right up and down uh, throughout this whole thing so 
So if even if you're a little bit, uh, you know, challenged that way in, in terms of uh, color, you can still use the old alphanumeric system is still in place. They haven't gone away with that. And there's plenty of options here. You can download your state and your area and print those out if you like. It's really, I don't think they, I don't, I'm not sure that, I don't know if they're even going to make any uh, maps to print out because everything's so digital now. Why not just print it out on your own computer and you can have it for yourself. Now the interactive map is what is most interesting to me. Once again, they want the capture. Put that in and here's the base map. Uh, you can have terrain, roads, or satellite images. Let's go with terrains, and I'll show you a really cool deal. Uh, let's go back to 36701, for instance. It automatically zooms you in, and it shows you exactly where it is. See? Now, here's the cool thing with the terrain map. Color uh, the transparency, because now, guess what? you can blend all that terrain in on it and you can see what's happening now if you look at the blog post you you know I, I talked about microclimates now microclimates are climates within climates and if you look here you see this kind of hilly region here and then the little town here is uh, kind of in a valley in fact, there's a little town called Valley Grand, just north of Selma. And down here you have a little bit more of a kind of a plateau kind of... Uh, so that's a microclimate, right? You can look at that as a microclimate. So what I was saying, if you were in one of these zones where you're right on the border between, say, 4B and 5A... Well, there may be some mountains or maybe some a plateau, maybe a valley, maybe you're up on a ridge, uh, whatever that may m make the determination whether or not you're in one of those zones or not. And so this stuff is, this is a far more accurate rap, uh, map, uh, far better for us as gardeners and you know, thanks, uh, and that's a good thing. I guess that's your tax, tax dollars at work. I like the fact that you can control the transparency here. Zero transparency, 100% transparency, and you know you can blend it however you like. And I uh, haven't uh, done the roads or satellite images here. And probably take some time to load, but you know as you can see, once again, you can. That's a good thing. You can zoom down, zoom in. So it's almost like they've taken a more accurate uh, zone map and, 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 and made it with kind of, I guess, like Google Earth or whatever. And so it's a very, very, uh, it's a really just pretty kind of cool, you know. <laughs> and so there you go. Though this is the uh, USDA's new plant hardiness zone maps, and I hope you guys find that useful in helping you grow your garden, save money on your grocery bill, and uh, I will see you guys on the other side. Grow them big. Oops.